They grabbed all that stack of papers and they threw it out the door. We are protected by the communist government to keep on broadcasting the truth. So I want to tell you that the left is less dangerous than the right right now. And in fact, another little insight. Did you know that America, I mean, Rome already owns America. They got the Supreme Court. Five out of nine judges are Catholic. They always vote as a block. Anything they want to do, they can do. The president will give them anything they want. They are ready to act in North America right now, except they got a big problem. They got a problem with the left. In South America, they lost Venezuela, Bolivia. They're losing Chile. They already lost Brazil. They lost Ecuador. They lost Nicaragua. Right now, the majority of South America is going left, and Rome doesn't know what to do because every time a left comes in, Rome is out. And they don't know what to do. They can't act in North America because the entire continent of South America is on the opposite side. So they've kind of put North America on hold, and now they've declared war on the left in South America. You know, during the Reformation days, while Martin Luther was preaching everywhere, did you know that God brought in the, Turkey, the Turks to fight them? They were so occupied for, fi for five or ten years fighting the Turks that the Reformation spread through all of Europe. And finally, when they got rid of that, they came back to focus on the Reformation, and they found it everywhere. Don't you think God knows how to play the game again? God is keeping Rome so busy with the left in South America that they don't have time to stop the Advent message. And I'm trying to tell you a secret. If you move right now, nobody can stop you. And no matter how big you think, it'll be successful. God will prosper our every single effort, Sister White says. God's word is a promise. This is your guide for, for small, small details on how to make decisions. And I'm making decisions that are so radical, they're so big, so impossible, and people just don't know how can do it. You know, I, don't, I don't either. I finally just gave up. I'm just going to make the decision. God is the one finishing this work. Let him do it. But every institution, every decision, every school we have, every airplane we have, every medical work we have, has to be 100% mission-driven or I want nothing to do with it. And if institutions decide to be mediocre, I feel sorry struggle, make it survive if you can. It doesn't mean that much to God. God is trying to finish the work and he's only focusing on institutions that are finishing the work. Now God loves all of us, but God is wanting to finish. And I tell you, th this hospital here has been here too long already. So you tell me Manchester hasn't even heard all of them, haven't heard everything yet? Something is wrong. I'm not being critical, I'm just saying we've got to wake up and do a better job. It's not that we've done a bad job. We just haven't done the job we were supposed to do. Now, has it been a good influence? Of course. I worked here. My loyalty, my heart's here. But I run hospitals. I mean, I run clinics now, and I run medical air, air, aviation, and I run media centers, and we run schools, and I've learned my lesson. 100% mission. I don't care if it looks like we're going to fail, and we never fail. It only grows bigger. So, oh, here's another secret. You know what? None of our schools charge tuition. They're all free. We have six schools, and we're building three more this year. Nobody charges tuition. How much do the airplanes charge? Nothing. How much do the networks charge? Nothing. Isn't this interesting? Doesn't it save a lot of problems charging tuition? You work your way through. The kids learn to work their way through. When there's something good on television that we want to put on the air, we don't charge the pastors. If somebody brings a program and says, I produced this program, how much does it cost? Let me look at it. This is good. Nothing. Right on the air. When I go to 3ABN to put us on, then they want to charge money to put something on. But, but you know, I've talked to them, and they've kind of given in a little bit. I'm just saying, we, we, we're, we say the Adventists are good Jews. We really are real Jews. We love money. We love to do business and publishing. We love to sell things. My, daughter was public, my two daughters are co-porters in the Southern Union. My first daughter was a great salesman. <laughs> Sold books. My second daughter... She called me a month into this program, crying. I can't sell books, Daddy. I'm not going to pay my tuition. It's horrible. What am I going to do? I said, did I hear you say sell books? Well, isn't that what I'm supposed to do? No, no. You got it all wrong. It has nothing to do with sales. Being a co-porter is about reaching people. I said, but, but don't I have to sell books? No, 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 no. The Holy Spirit's job does that. All you have to do is love people and make sure you take care of their needs. Well, what am I supposed to do then? Talk to them, pray with them, take some literature, give them literature, give them stuff, and, and, and forget about the sales. And if you don't sell a single book the entire summer, your tuition is already paid for. God has another way to solve it. Oh, Daddy, she said, this is wonderful. I, I didn't realize that. 
Thank you. So even if I don't sell anything, not a problem. No, not a problem. Don't even worry about it. Just meet the people's needs. She was number two in sales for the whole union. It's not about selling. It's not about charging. It's about reaching people. We've got to close if we're going to have time for questions and answers. But I would like to make another invitation. If you feel God is calling you into sacrificial ministry, that doesn't mean going anywhere. It could be here. It could be anywhere. But if God is calling you to sacrificial ministry, that means you've already put everything on the altar. Most of you came forward. God owns everything you have. But it's time for you to think sacrifice. Carry the cross just like Jesus did. It's time to say, I'll give more than I can give. I will serve. I will do whatever I have to do. It will not be a money issue. If God says, give it all, give it all. If he says, serve for free, I'll serve for free. If it says, go overseas, I'll go overseas. If he says, stay here and, 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 and reach my people in Clay County, whatever God tells you, but it's sacrifice. And you're willing to go all the way and say, whatever it takes, I want to share the sacrifice that Jesus says. You know, if we suffer like him, we will also reign with him. If this is what God is calling you to do, you have an understanding now that your job is the sacrificial ministry. And God will tell you what it is. But you're making a decision today that you are willing to carry that cross. Because the cross has a lot of joy. You know, for the, cross, for the joy that was laid before him, he endured the cross. If you want great joy, pick up your cross. It, joy and, and sacrifice go hand in hand. We made a decision. My wife and I don't own a home yet. We, I wished I could have. I wish I had the money, but we gave up that dream a long time ago. I said, well, in heaven someday, maybe God will give us one. I mean, he will give us one in heaven, but maybe someday we'll have to wait. But, but we've sacrificed a lot, but we have the great joy of reaching hundreds of millions and new networks and the Philippines going up and Hong Kong and China going up, a media center, and in Mongolia and in India and in Europe, three networks, and, and South America. I'll tell you, I don't know how to explain the joy. I don't know. Who am I? I'm just a jungle pilot, barefoot Indian jungle pilot, raised in a bush, but God has given me the ability to make decisions that influence the entire world. It's, it's a joy. I don't know. I can't wait to get to heaven. I wish it was tomorrow. I want to count the souls. I'm just clink, 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 clink. People never met before. They're going to be there because of the decision that my wife and I made. I invite you to make that same decision. And if God is speaking to you and you're willing to do that, would you come forward for a special prayer of dedication? God is going to lead you beyond your comfort zone and he's going to ask for everything, but he's going to take you along this path and you're saying, I want to be on that path and I want God to train me and teach me in the sacrificial ministry. Praise the Lord. You know, you know the devil is scared here right now, right? Because the decisions that you're making, this is really penetrates into his area. He's really, really upset. So you need protection, don't you? Protection means you can't have anything in your house that belongs to the enemy. When you go home tonight, you got to clean those shelves. If there's anything there that belongs to the devil, get it off the shelf. Get it out from where it is and burn it. Destroy it because as long as it's in your house, he has a key to your house and to your life. I don't have time to tell you, but I had one girl in Norway and until she pulled off the last rock symbol off of her jacket, she was in severe back pain 24 hours a day. She, gave, she was an atheist. She accepted the Lord. She destroyed her records, but she still had pain until she ripped off eight symbols off of her jacket. When she ripped off the last one, she felt an electric go all the way through and out her feet, and the pain was gone. The devil was there torturing her, even though she accepted Christ. Why? Because he has rights to do that. He got, the devil has rights into your life unless you get rid of everything that belongs to him, as far as your conscience is aware of. Of course, if you're married to somebody that, that, that doesn't share that, you, they have rights too. You can only deal with yours what's in your life. Let us kneel down for prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us so much that you've given us a wake-up call. 9-11 was a wake-up call. Even with all its terrible consequences, it was a wake-up call. And what's going to happen next, unfortunately, will be much, much worse than 9-11. And that might have been the last wake-up call. But right now, you've given us another wake-up call. You've given us a chance to understand the shortness of time. We don't know the day or the hour of the final crisis. Worse yet, the day or the hour of your second coming, which will be after that. What we do know is we are living at the very door of eternity. 
it's about to swing closed.